This is Dr. Holt. This lecture is AP Physics C, an elastic collision, and I titled this, Why is the Angle 90 Degrees? In this lecture, I want to go over where you have two masses. One has a velocity, and they have a glancing collision. And I want to prove, if the two masses are the same, that the angle between the two final velocities will be 90 degrees. Okay, so I wrote this up. We have a pool game. The red ball, which has an initial speed of 5 meters a second, makes an elastic collision with the blue ball, which is initially at rest. After the collision, the blue ball moves at an angle of 30 degrees to the left of the original direction of the red ball. Assuming that the balls both have the same mass, find the direction of motion of the red ball after the collision and find the speed of each ball immediately after the collision. All right, let's start working that problem here. All right, what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and let this angle here be theta, and we'll let this angle here be beta. All right, and what we're going to do is set up, we're going to determine what the initial momentum is, and the initial momentum will be the mass of the red ball times 5 plus the mass of the blue ball times 0. So in this case, we'll get an initial momentum of 5m. Now we know with the conservation momentum that final momentum must equal initial momentum if no outside forces are applied. So we can look at this and we also note, before we look at this, let's talk about this too. We know that this is only going to be in the x direction here and this is also um, going to be in the x direction and we can also say that p final in the y must also equal to p initial in the y. But if we look here, we know immediately that p initial in the y, the momentum in the y must equal zero. So we can state right now that the final momentum in the y direction has to equal zero. All right, let's look at this right here. Now, we can write p final momentum is going to be the mass of the blue ball times the velocity of the blue ball final times the cosine of theta plus, I'll make this x too, we're only doing the x direction, is going to be the mass of the red ball times the velocity of the red ball final times the cosine of beta. All right, And we can do the same thing for the momentum final in the y direction. We can say the mass times the velocity of the blue ball final times the sine of theta minus the mass of the red ball times this velocity final times the sine of beta. Alright, so now we're going to use what we determined here initially. We're going to set it equal to what we did here in the final. So we can come up with an equation here as 5m must equal to mass times the blue ball final times the cosine of theta plus mass times the velocity of the red ball final times the cosine of beta. Okay, we'll go ahead and we'll cancel out our masses. We'll divide everything by m. So our masses are gone. <clears throat> and we end up with a fairly simple equation that 5 is equal to the velocity of the blue ball final times the cosine of theta plus the velocity of the red ball final times the cosine of beta. All right, let's do the same thing now with the y. We know the y is going to equal to 0. So the initial momentum was equal to 0 in the y direction. Final momentum in the y must also, oh, excuse me, must also equal to 0. So we're going to set it equal to this part of the equation, which will give me the velocity of the blue ball final times the sine of theta minus the velocity of the red ball final times the sine of beta. All right, so we really have two equations here. We have this equation and we have this equation here. Alright, now let's go back and let's look at kinetic energy because, oh, sorry, come back here. Let's go down here. Let's look at kinetic energy. Let's stand down here. We can say <coughs> that the kinetic energy do a different color. We can say the kinetic energy initial must equal to Ke final. And we can only say that if it's an elastic collision. So let's determine 
what how much kinetic energy we have. Now remember kinetic energy is not a vector quantity so you're not going to do the x and y, you're just going to do the, the regular velocity. So we're going to take one half times the mass of the red ball times the velocity which we said was 5 squared. We're going to set it equal to the final kinetic energy which would be the mass times V. We'll do the blue final squared plus one half times mass times the velocity of the red ball final squared. Okay, that's your kinetic energy. Now there's quite a bit of thing quite a few things we can cancel out. We can cancel out the one halves and we can cancel out the masses and masses. So let's go ahead and rewrite our equation using the kinetic energy. I'll scroll down just a little bit. So we can say the kinetic energy would be twenty five is equal to, and I missed the math, let me cancel this other math out. 25 would equal to V in the blue ball final squared plus velocity of the red ball final squared. Alright, so far so good. Alright, now let's see what we can do here. Um, what I want to try to do here is I'm going to go ahead and square this. I'm going to square this one here and then I'm going to square this equation here. So I'm going to take this equation, bring it down here, and we're going to square it. And I want to square it because I want to try to get the velocities squared also. You notice this equation here is very similar to this equation except it's squared. So when I square that, that's going to give me 25. And again, I'm going to have to FOIL this. That'll give me plus... Excuse me, let me erase that real quick, sorry. Put the equal sign in. That's going to give me 25 is equal to velocity of the blue ball final squared times the cosine of theta squared plus 2 times the velocity of the blue ball final, the velocity of the red ball final times the cosine of theta times the cosine of beta plus the velocity red final squared times the cosine of beta squared. Okay, now let's do the same thing with this equation. We'll square everything on that side. That give me zero over here. This will give me velocity of the blue final squared times the sine of theta squared minus two times the velocity blue final velocity red final times the sine of theta times the sine of beta plus velocity r final squared times the sine of beta squared. Okay, what I want to put my equal sign here. Okay, what I want to do now, I'm going to add these two equations together. And some of you are probably seeing very quickly you're going to get into some identities that we definitely know. Okay, so I'll summarize this. It's going to be hard to get this in one line. Add this together. It's going to give me 25 is equal to velocity of the, let's see here, velocity of the blue final squared. I'll put this in parentheses of the cosine theta squared plus sine theta squared. Okay, and then we'll get, um, let's see, plus, we can just add these two together here, plus 2 velocity B final times final, I'm going to go ahead and apply the negative over to there, that's going to give me the cosine theta cosine beta minus sine theta sine beta. Okay, now I'm going to come down to here and we can do this one. It's going to be really tight to get this in here. Flossy red final squared over the cosine beta squared squared just a little bit better than that so you can see it better. plus sine beta squared. Okay, 
Now you note that this is an identity. This goes to 1 and this goes to 1 here. So we can summarize this one more time as 25 is equal to V B, the velocity of the blue ball final squared. Now bring this all the way over. Velocity of the red ball final squared plus 2 velocity blue ball final times the velocity of the red ball final times the cosine of theta cosine beta minus sine theta sine beta. Alright, so now we got it down to here. <clears throat> now the thing about this is that you, you, sh you probably recognize this as being an another identity here. This identity here cannot now be written as the cosine of theta plus beta. I think it's one of your trig addition properties. So we can rewrite that. And now we're going to get into, we'll summarize this. That's going to give me 25 is equal to velocity the blue final squared plus the velocity of the red final squared plus 2 velocity of the blue final times velocity of the red final times the cosine of theta plus beta. However, from the kinetic energy equation, let's go back to the kinetic energy equation. We know the kinetic energy equation. Do we not know this right here? So let's bring that one down. And what that means is this is right here. This is equal to 25 also. So that gives me 25 is equal to 25 plus 2 times V, of the, excuse me, the velocity of the blue ball final times the velocity of the red ball final times the cosine of theta plus beta. Well, we subtract 25 from both sides and we will get this equation. 0 is equal to 2 times velocity of blue final times the velocity of the red final times the cosine of theta plus beta. But remember, when we did this problem initially, we can go back here, we were given the angle Let's go back here as the blue ball mo moves at 30 degrees. So we know that theta is equal to 30 degrees. So we'll come down here. We'll put in theta as 30 degrees. Then we're going to get 0 is equal to 2 times the velocity of the blue ball final times the velocity of the red ball final times the cosine of theta, which we said was 30 plus beta. Okay, now we know that the cosine of 90 degrees is equal to zero. So we proved right there that beta must equal to 60 degrees. <clears throat> and according to my picture, if this ball goes off at 30 degrees, then this ball has to go off to 60 degrees, which means this angle right here has to be 90 degrees. All right, now if we want to go find um, what our values are, we can go back to the earlier equation that said that 5 is equal to the velocity of the red ball final times the cosine of the angle. We'll put 60 into here plus the velocity of the blue ball final times the cosine of 30 degrees. And then we'll go back and use our sine, sine, sine functions or our uh, momentum in the uh, y direction. Zero, and we had minus v times the red ball final times the sine of 60 degrees plus v blue ball final times the sine of 30 degrees. Okay, now there's obviously several ways you can, you can solve this equation here. I just set this up in a matrices. You could do it, uh, solve it by substitution, elimination, whatever you want to do here. I'm just going to draw a little matrices here, here, and here. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and draw this across. Again, going a lot of trouble here. Okay. 
Now we'll just go ahead and put in our values here. I'll let this be the uh, cosine of 60 degrees here. We'll do cosine 30 here. We'll put 5 over here. We'll do minus sine 60 here. We'll do sine 30 here. And we'll set this equal to 0. We have a 2 by 3 matrices. I'll just run this in my calculator. And when I do that, I will get the velocity of the red final is equal to 2.5. And I'll get the velocity of the blue final as 4.33. Okay, this is a good, uh, good problem. It's a good proof to determine that the angle was 90 degrees. And again, then from that information, then you can solve your two velocities of the red ball and the blue ball final.